Father, thank you. I get to be on that side. Um, to I, I can receive today too. Thank you. Father, we come before you today as your people, your, your children, your family, your disciples. Father, I pray that you would impart to us grace. We declare that we are ready to receive from you this day. We declare that we are good ground. That we are doers of your word, not hearers only. Father, I pray that the words today would have a transforming effect. Your words, your life, through your ministers to your people. We ask for your grace. We love you. We praise you. Again, we say we worship you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on up, guys. Oh, you got the Turn on the button when you're ready. Oh, well, I'm surprised at the length of the service. <laughs> I am. Because we have, we, the church we go to, the service is uh, an hour total. Worship. Everything, it just, I mean, and this pastor's sermon is 20 minutes. My introductory notes were longer than his sermons. So, <laughs> so but it's wonderful. Okay, so I want, I'm not going to keep you long because I really want to turn, I really want to turn the uh, service over to Elaine here in just a minute. But, <clears throat> I, you know, you know the, the two things we came here to do was to impart to you a gift about uh, healing uh, I, I like healing. I like to pray for people with healing. I spent two years in Redding, California, at the School of Ministry, doing nothing but healing. Day in and day out, we would pray for healing. We saw all kinds of miracles going on all the time. And then when I left Redding, I thought, oh, this will continue, this will continue. Well, outside of Redding, there's not a lot of healing going on on a regular basis. I mean, there's healing. Like you say, you have healing here. Uh, we don't... I mean, it just doesn't happen to the degree that it was happening in Reading. So that was, I came out of there really jazzed, ready to go. And I really long for the opportunities to minister in churches and teach about healing again and stir people up in the gift of healing. So that's what I'm about. Elaine has lifetime uh, been motivated to, to present the, gospel, the uh, ministry of prophecy to the church, to the body of Christ. She's really... That's, that's her calling. That's what she feels most gifted at. That's what she does all the time to me. No, that isn't. <laughs> that's, that's, she just, she's just a very prophetic person. A very prophetic person. And uh, like she said, uh, Dee, her brother, said to her, has said to her on a number of occasions, usually kidding, but actually we've looked, we've kind of compared. <clears throat> Elaine has had more prophecies over her than Jerusalem. <laughs> And I am, I'm not kidding you, there may be some truth to that, and this is why. We have a notebook at home where we've transcribed all of the prophecies that we've received over, probably over a 20-year period of time. And, and there are so many prophecies. The notebook is, is single-spaced pages that's probably an inch and a half thick. Just prophetic word after prophetic word after prophetic word. And Elaine is going, today, Elaine is going to elaborate on one of them that I received, one single prophecy that I received uh, 40-some years ago from a man named Dick Mills. And uh, uh, I could tell you a funny story about that, but I won't tell you about the guy that forgets that he even got a prophecy from Dick Mills. But anyway, he, uh, he can you hear me? Yes. Okay, are you sure you don't? You, Pray for your healing. Your <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, so uh, uh, so that's just she's taken one single prophecy and she's told this whole story that's transcribed trans that's uh, hap- occurred. It's unfolded over a forty-year period, a fifty-year period, but just a single scripture that we hung on to. That we hung on to. I still have, in fact. The, the prophecy was given to me in a, on a little piece of paper in a, in a uh, restaurant in, in um, Gresham, Oregon in 1976. 
I still have that little piece of paper. That's how important, the importance that we place on when God speaks a word to you, he means it, and he, it's yours forever, as long as you stay with it, as long as you keep it in front of you, as long as you remember it, as long as you rehearse it, as long as you chase it, God's word is true. But there are people who t- hear a word from the Lord. In fact, man, most of you are probably, are probably guilty of this. You hear a word, you think, oh yeah, that sounds good, and then, and then you forget about it. And believe me, Within a month, maybe a week, that prophecy is gone. You don't remember what somebody said. You don't remember that somebody even said it, let alone remember what was said. But it's important, if you get a prophecy today or any time you get a prophecy, you should immediately make an attempt to write it down as much as you can remember that you might, that you might pursue it, okay? I'm, I'm not kidding you. These prophecies to me have transformed my life. They have led my life. They, and, the, and the prophecies, you know, of course, then we too have the, prophet, the promises in the word. And so I hang on to them. And I want, I want to, I want to um, just a couple, a couple, oh yeah, I got to give you the clock. Um, okay. So anyway, um, I, I just wanted to ask you this. Now, um, Oh, that's my wrong notes here. I just want to ask you this. Why are, why are we afraid to, uh, why don't we pray for the sick? Why do, so often do we not pray for the sick? And I tell you, there are, there are like three main reasons why. We have self-condemnation. We don't feel worthy. We don't feel like we can. We don't feel we we're worthy to be used. We also have doubt that enters into our mind. But I want to turn, I want us to turn. You don't have to turn your Bible. I'm going to read it. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. You guys remember that song from the 1970s? Anybody? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Remember that? Some of you, the young people go, huh? <laughs> Okay, but, um, but the, the most people don't know the second line of that verse. That's the 103rd Psalm. Most of the people don't remember or know the second verse of that. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and he repeats the first phrase, and forget not all his benefits. And then it speaks of the benefits. And that's what I want to remind you of right now this morning. The, who, who forgives all our iniquities. One of the benefits is, the Lord forgives all our iniquities. What are iniquities? Iniquities are things that go against the word of God. Actions or thoughts or processes that go against the word of God. Those are iniquities. And he heals all our diseases. He heals all of our diseases. Not some, not one, not two, not all of our diseases, it says. Okay. He redeems our life from destruction. Another benefit. He redeems our life from destruction. How many of you have faced destruction? How many of you are facing destruction? He relieves, He redeems us from all destruction. That's a very important promise. That's a huge, wonderful promise. And he, uh, he crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. We need that so often, but that's just one of the benefits of pursuing them, uh, uh, the Lord. He redeems us from all our tender mercies. And here are some that a lot of people in this church, here's one, another benefit, who satisfies our mouth with good things. Do you like your mouth satisfied with good things? Yes, you do. But here's why. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. God's going to put good things in your mouth so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. That would be great for a lot of us, wouldn't it? Yeah that our youth is renewed like the eagles. Okay, so that's basically all I want to introduce. I want Elaine to come on up here. But that's about healing. I'm saying, why do we not pursue healing? Why do we not pray for people who are sick? Why do we not pray for people that are hurting? Because we have this self-doubt. But God said, God's word says, hey, he does all these things for us. So there's no need. We have no excuse. We have no excuse to not pray for people. So at the end of service, I'm going to give you a list. I told you already earlier this morning, I told you. I'm going to give you a list that probably has 60 scriptures dealing with healing. You take that home. I'm going to give one per family, by the way. You take that home and you look at it, you review it, and don't throw it away. I've carried that piece of paper for 50 years. 
I've carried that person piece of paper for 50 years I've carried it and I know what's in there and I look at it every now and then not every day but I look at it every now and then I review it I talk about it I think about it I reflect on it I'm ready to pray for people who are sick Amen. okay and uh, then and God's word is uh, is forever okay honey it's yours Hear me, Jim? Can you hear me? Okay. Are you wondering what word he received? Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, 1956. Dick Mills. Jim was there, but I don't know if you remember. <laughs> okay. By the way, Jim was my best man in our wedding 41 years ago. I've known Jim since 1970. Four, I think, 1974. When we were all young. <laughs> now we're all old. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the word is, was, and still is, and ever shall be. Though your beginning was very small, yet your latter days will greatly increase. And we understood through the years that God was saying, even though you don't have much now, I want to increase that in your life. And that's what we've pursued. And I want to talk about that today. I, I, we talk, I talked some about this last time I was here. But I'm going to give a more comprehensive coverage of what actually happened because there are a lot of lessons in these things that we learned. The scripture for today be imitators of those who through faith and patience have inherited the promises. So Paul was saying, hey, if someone comes around that have inherited their prophetic words and the promises that God gave to them, pay attention because there's some things there you can learn for the things that God wants to do in your life. What do you do when you, when you come up empty-handed and things just aren't working and oh my goodness was that really God but we've lived it and there are some lessons here that I think will be helpful to you okay <clears throat> I want you to picture the years we got married in 1980 this word came in 76 we got married in 80 and <clears throat> those early years of our marriage were times of want lack we were poor a lot of times during those years. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, Tom would get a job, and then that wouldn't work out. He was, it seemed like you were always working and not working. There were just cycles that you would go in. And yet we had these words, and we kept receiving these words. Like one time you weren't even employed, and this prophet came to you and said, um, you're going to have your own business, and you're going to have a lot of success, but you're going to have to take the step of faith or it'll never happen. So then the prophet asked him, what do you do? And Tom said, I'm unemployed. But see, God was saying, yes, here's what I want for you. I want you to have your own business. You've, you've somehow got that ability in you, even though you may not realize it. And God would speak things to you. For I would say unto this people, there are many people here today who say, I can't do this. I can't do that. I'm not gifted. I'm not talented. But the Lord would say, yes, you are gifted in ways that you don't even know it. And today as you hear this sermon, say, all right, Lord, how can that apply to me? What are you saying to me? Lord, we thank you that you're going to speak to the people and you're going to do things for them and you're going to begin to open up their future to them. Amen. Amen. So, so Tom has this word. He has business ability, but God said it's not going to happen unless you take the step of faith. See, many prophecies that we receive are conditional. There's a condition that we have to meet. 
So that was the condition that he was going to have to meet. Of course, he wasn't there yet. He didn't know what the business were. We used to try to say, well, now, what could the business, what could business be? Could it be food? Could it be this? You know, who knows? We don't know. We don't have a business. Okay. Well, along about a time when Tom was unemployed again, he went to a real estate seminar. He's always loved real estate. I mean, loved real estate. So um, he went to a real estate seminar, and he sat next to a guy by the name of Duke. Now, what's the probability that this would happen? He's sitting next to this guy named Duke, and Duke starts talking to Tom, and he said, you know, I just sold a business in Las Vegas for a million dollars, which in today's money I think would be 2,600,000, but I have a million dollars. Would you like to go in partnership with me? Hmm. Now, does that sound like God? <laughs> I thought it did. A stranger. I've got a million dollars. Let's go in business. He told Tom, you buy the, you hunt the property. I'll, I'll pay for it, Duke said, because he had the million dollars, not Tom. And then, so Tom bought property. Then he was responsible for getting it fixed up, resold, well, by the time <coughs> he got all this taken care of, it was longer than Duke liked. Don, Duke took, did he take most of the money? He took more than you thought he was going to take. Well, he took more than his share, yeah. He took more than his share, and he didn't want to do business anymore because it took too long. So it left us... Uh, within days of our home going into foreclosure. Mm -hmm. Remember, oh, this must be God. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Days of going into foreclosure, we were also renting a, a property that we were living in. We were six months behind with that. Fortunately, it was my brother's property, so he let us live there without paying rent. Our credit cards went up quite a bit. Well, guess what? That wasn't God. Mm -hmm. It looked like God. I mean, what was the likelihood? So you have to be careful of things that look like God, but, it, but they're not God. Okay, so that, that wasn't it. That didn't work. So then my husband um, got involved with another financial project. We made a trip to Oregon to where his family lived. His sister owned a tortilla factory. And for many years it was successful, but it was just getting ready to close because they made some bad business mistakes. So she was telling Tom, Tom, why don't you take it over and see if you can resurrect it? This was Mary's tortilla yeah. factory. Yeah, it was it had been very successful. So I didn't want to move. We were living in California, my family. I didn't want to move. But Tom, business, real estate. So we're driving around on a Sunday afternoon while we're there, and I'm telling myself, because I was upset, so I started telling myself, oh, you're not going to move up here anyway. Quit worrying about it. This isn't going to work out. You're not going to move. So I felt good. Well, that night we visited a church, and the, uh, the pastor was preaching something from the Old Testament. We were sitting out in the audience, and when he quoted this part of the scripture, in returning to this place, I had something happen that I'd never had happened before. It was like he shot an arrow, boom, and it went right to my heart. It just hit me, and I thought, okay, I'm moving here. I've got to return here. <laughs> so we went back home to prepare, and I have a, had a friend. She's probably dead now but because she was older than I was, uh, but she was very prophetic, and so I said, Nita, we're gonna, we have this opportunity, we're gonna go da 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 da. And she said, oh, I hope you don't have trouble with family. I said, oh, we're not gonna have trouble with family? <laughs> Listen, if a prophetic person speaks something to you, at least consider it. <laughs> at least consider it. We had trouble with family. Yes, we did. But anyway, it was too far gone. And we were, uh, we talked to an attorney in town about it, he said, look, it was a small town. I think he knew the family, right? Yeah. Didn't it? He said, you guys can't win. 
If you succeed with it, they'll say you stole it. If you don't succeed, they'll say you lost it. <laughs> well, we didn't succeed, <laughs> so they probably said we lost it. Yeah, they did. Anyway, guess what? That wasn't it. That wasn't the promise because we left there. We moved in with my mom and dad. Uh, we were in debt for two years, so that wasn't it. Let me see what we did next. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is a good one. Remember when the, oh, this is a real good one. Remember when the, uh, when the prophet told Tom, you're going to have your own business, you're going to have a lot of success, you've got to take the step of faith. Well, let me tell you where the step of faith came in. We, again, we were, Tom wasn't working. We didn't have money to pay our You're going to make it sound like I never worked. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did work. It's just so many of these stories go when you're not working. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so we, um, okay, so we're in this, a crisis. I mean, it, it was a crisis because we had three kids. Uh, no, no money to pay rent. We were getting our food supplemented from my mom and dad's church when they would have the free giveaways, <laughs> the free food. Okay, so Tom and I, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? I know what, let's go borrow money from mom and dad. So we went to mom and dad, we borrowed $500. Well then we went to a church service, a prophet, and he gave me this word. He said, Wait, oh, I left this part out of when I, when I was saying what we did those years. One thing, we were living with other people quite a bit of the time. With my mom and dad, with Dean Kathy, uh, a friend of ours. I mean, we just lived a lot of time with people helping us out. So this prophet said, the days are over when you're going to have to depend on what this one provided for you and what that one provided for you. Yay! The days are over, but the test came. So we, Tom and I talked. We're going to give the money back to Mom. We're going to believe God. Took the $500 back, gave it to her, and this is what I said. And when you say something to God, you better mean it, and I mean it. I said, all right, Lord, if we have to go live in our car with our three children, I'm willing. I will go live in my car. Because you said the days are over when we're going to have to depend on what all these people have provided for us. So, do you think we had to go live in our car? No, we didn't. Nope, not even momentarily. Uh, Tom was offered a job, and uh, he became school teacher for many years. And we never had to depend on what other people were willing to provide for us. Mm -hmm. But see, there was the step of faith. God may require you, okay, yeah, you have this promise. Will you believe me that I'm going to give it to you? Well, there's a few little testings that come along. Mm -hmm. At one point, again, another prophet. In fact, that was Dick Mills that said, we were visiting this church, and Dick Mills pointed back to Tom, and he said, God's grooming that man for prosperity. You know what the key word? Grooming. <laughs> Grooming. <laughs> A lot of grooming went on waiting for that prosperity. Okay, so, it, so uh, we moved to Portland. Uh, Tom did have a job there. We bought a house, and uh, it had a little rental in the back, and... Um, one day, Tom got up, got dressed. What he didn't know, that he was dressing for his destiny. He was about to meet his destiny. Destiny of what God had said. Mm -hmm. There's going to be prosperity. Mm -hmm. You're going to have plenty. Mm -hmm. So we went. I went with him. We went in home, home base, which is like a Home Depot or a Lowe's. And there was a man in paint clothes. And Tom needed some information about painting, so he went over and started talking to this man. And this man said, well, what I do is I rent rooms. Rent rooms. 
We didn't know that was destiny. That was destiny speaking into our life. Rooms, renting rooms. <laughs> we didn't know that though, did we? No, but I'll tell you what, and this is a lesson, guys. Destiny did not come walking through the door with a million dollars in his pocket. Mm -hmm. Destiny came in a Home Depot, a man dressed in paint clothes with an idea. So it wasn't, it wasn't that long. Tom did rent a couple rooms there in Portland, but then we moved to Idaho. We bought a fourplex. We're living in one of them. And um, the people next door to our apartment, we owned it, and they moved. So Tom said, let's rent rooms. Mm -hmm. So we started renting rooms. The people next door moved out. We rented rooms. The people in the fourth apartment moved out. We rented rooms. Mm -hmm. And then it just went from there. Tom kept buying, renting rooms, renting rooms, renting rooms. At some point, this is kind of funny, how you never know what you may think you don't like when you find out if God puts it in your hand that you really like it. Now, when he started renting rooms, do you remember I said, I don't want to rent rooms. You do that. <laughs> Remember when I say something, I mean it. So, nope, I don't want to deal with renting rooms. That wasn't me. Well, then Tom had to go to California to work because we were running out low on money. This was when we still owned just the fourplex. And um, guess what I had to do? I had to rent rooms. <laughs> and you know what? I like renting rooms. That's me. It fits my personality perfectly. I've been doing it for many years now. 22, 24 years. And I still enjoy it. Now, Tom loves the real estate. He runs around forever trying to find things to buy. He buys them. Then he says, okay, how many rooms can we get in this one unit? Because in Boise, we're allowed five individual renters in one unit. And we've had some rooms in strange places. We've taken laundry rooms, made bedrooms out of them. We've taken dining rooms, made bedrooms. We've taken the living room, made bedrooms. It works. That's our business model. Okay. So, finally, God was grooming this man for prosperity. We're not rich, but we are prosperous. We have... Um, I get a new car if I want one, and I want one. <laughs> I, I love new cars. Tom, eh, he has an older, what is that, older Genesis. He has two older pickups. Eh, he doesn't care. Sometime our son kind of blames me oh, I want, that I want these things. What he doesn't know about his dad, if Tom wanted a new car, there would be a car sitting in the driveway this afternoon, but that isn't his need. He just loves buying these, this, this property. So, um, okay guys, so we're not rich, but we are prosperous. God was grooming this man for prosperity, and we were willing to go through all the processes to inherit the promise. And God also said, I'm giving you this money but not just for yourself. No, it's to help other people also. Mm -hmm. So if we ever just do the money for ourselves, we might lose it. Mm -hmm. All right, come up, honey. That's our story. And you've got a story. God gave a prophetic word just a little bit ago. He's got some stories for you. Don't just settle in the job you have now without knowing that there's something better. If he says you're in the right job, great. Whatever he says unto you, do it. Right, Pastor? Let me just say about some of those opportunities, too, that came up. The, one of the first properties we bought, we bought on credit cards. We got two credit cards one time that came in unsolicited. They were $5,000 each. Well, guess what? That's a down payment on a house. So, <laughs> so we, we maxed them out and bought a property. And other times, we, we, when we moved to Portland, we didn't, I had the, VA, the GI Bill available to me. 
We moved, we went to Portland, we lived in a motel in a week, and I said, I'm not gonna rent a house, we're gonna buy one. So we started looking for a house right away, I bought one with my GA bill, no money down. So anyway, those are the kinds of things that happened along the way as we took steps of faith to do them. You want a truck? Then do something to get your truck. I don't know what, you know. I don't know if you want to own your own truck or what, but you should probably, maybe, huh? <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so that's all I want to say about that. There were all, a lot of things that happened in between that uh, ushered us along. What are you going to do? Honey? Well, I just feel that Honey, I'd like okay. to pray for sick people. You know, we, as you know, Are there any sick among you? <laughs> when, when we traveled with Dee, what we would do is um, Dee would pray for people that wanted deliverance. I would pray. I would have a line for people that wanted the prophetic. And then Tom would pray for people that needed healing. So maybe we should do that. If, if, you, want, if you want a word... Maybe we should do it together. Maybe we, let's do it together. We don't have a lot of they only, there's only 40 people in here. No, there's probably yeah, 45 people. If we allow two minutes per person, that only takes us till 2.30. <laughs> 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 okay. No. <laughs> All right. Think, uh, think quick. You know. okay. Run those numbers. Okay. You have a word. We both prophesy. So. Well, I gave, I gave the word I had. <laughs> Okay, well. Fran, Fran, I feel that you've been a real blessing to this church. Yes, that you just, you just have a heart of gold. Don't start crying. <laughs> <laughs> and Fran, I feel that God is going to reward you for that because I know a lot of times you are not rewarded. There are times you're, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I start oh, you're going to record it. Oh, it's being recorded. Yes. All right, and my words are being recorded, Lord. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fran, right. Fran has been a real help to this church. She's just really opened up her heart and just said, what can I do? And there were times you were not acknowledged for it. Times that maybe you just felt people, at least they could be a little thankful. Times they weren't even thankful. But God said, I've put those things in a book of remembrance. My daughter, I have not forgotten your labor of love, and I will reward you. The, the little uh, daughter there, what's, what's your name? Shelby. What? Shelby. Shelby. Shelby, I just saw in you and looking at you that you have an eagerness to know the heart of God. Is that true? Yeah, <laughs> good. And, and I just saw that in, in the time to come, you're going to pursue the things of God in a way that's going to amaze your parents and going to amaze you and amaze your siblings. That you have a heart for God, and you're going to pursue that. And the, and the Lord's going to just bless you. with. He's going to give you insight into things, open your heart to, to his love, and he's just going to move in you. And besides that, you're beautiful. <laughs> Okay, then the young lady, right, with all those curls. What's your name? Brooklyn. Brooklyn, I feel, I feel there is some type of ministry that God has for you. You're not going to be one that just sits back and sits in church and watch everybody else do things. I think even in your high school, that God wants you to begin to say, all right, Lord, who can I speak to? Who needs a word? Do you want to do that? Okay. Well, you can. You can. When you go to school, begin to, all right, Lord, I'm available. Many times that's all we have to do is say, Lord, I'm available. Lord, she's available. And after you graduate from high school, diligently ask God what he wants to do with you because it's not, again, it's not just to sit back, but you're going to take places of leadership. 
And God's, you're in a training period. These are the training years of your life. So it's important to listen to the Lord and pray and say, all right, Lord, what do I do? And then when he says it, do it. And the guy in the back, I forget his name, that had the prophecy of proverb. Okay, that one? Okay, that's you? You want to stand up? I want to say this to you. What's your name, first of all? Ernie. What? Ernie. Andy. Andy. Andy, yeah. Andy, um, Walmart is just a stepping stone. <laughs> Ask your pastor to interpret that. Okay, and Clint, I don't have a lot of clarity on this. So it's going to have to be something that you take before the Lord. Okay, but you know what we were talking about earlier? Okay, if it doesn't happen right now, don't be discouraged. Okay? I'm not saying it's not going to happen right now. So don't go away saying, she said that, like I said, I don't have the clarity I just know that if it doesn't happen now, don't give up. Okay? Be encouraged. For the Lord wants to bring fruitfulness into your life. He wants to bring wholeness into your life. He wants to bring more ministry for you and your wife. Because you have an ability God wants you to begin to share the things that you've learned through the years as you look around and see other people's lives that you can relate to that and you can help them. You can say, yeah, I've been there. I've been through that. And just begin to share and pray and help other people. Okay? So you have a real um, ministry of helps. You have a real ability to help. Okay. Um, uh, what? Yeah, you. The, in the back, yeah. and you, you're the hat, touching your hat. Are you a, you're a couple? Yes. You're, you're a man and wife? Yes. Okay. You're not living, just living together. You're a man and wife, right? Yes. yes. I'm, just, I'm just kidding you. <laughs> I knew you were a man and wife. But listen, let me, let me just say, let me just say, I saw a, I just saw a life, a period of time, a long, an extended period of time, that you guys are going to have great joy in your home. <laughs> I don't know why I saw that, but I did see that. Okay, so look forward to a period of great joy. And when next time you get in a fight, just remember, there's a period of great joy coming to us. <laughs> okay, got it? <laughs> Okay, the brother in the purple. What's your name? Mike. Mike, do you like to pray for people? Do you like to pray? Well, I feel that you have a real ministry of intercession. Do you know what intercession is? Where you pray for others. And God's going to move you more strongly into that. And he's saying, son, look to me. Keep your eyes on me. Keep your ears open, for I'm going to begin to reveal to you some things that you've never thought about, that you've never considered. Amen. Amen. And what, Good things, brother. Well, let me see. Uh, what, what's your name again? Mike? Mike. Mike? Mike. Mike. And I saw that uh, I have mine. And I saw, <laughs> just keep away. And I saw that uh, there, I saw that there has been a lot of, um, not disappointment, but a lot of, you, you haven't seen a lot of answer to prayers. You're going to see a lot of answer to prayers. Amen. 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 Yeah, brother, because I feel that uh, this word I gave to you about the intercessor, that the Lord is really uh, putting that gift on you today. Come on, I need some intercession. <laughs> 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 okay. Now the the lady back there with the turquoise. Yeah. What what Erlene. We need to give her a word cuz well, I her. think she wanted one. She does. <laughs> who who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Erlene. Erlene has a great history. 
She's his brother. His brother? I mean, she's his <laughs> sister. <laughs> she's his sister. And boy, and she has, a, and, and the boy, the, the Walmart kid, his mother is their, was their sister. Oh, my goodness. Okay. How confusing. <laughs> <laughs> His grandmother was your sister, so he's okay. your great nephew. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now we got that all straightened out, Jim. <laughs> all in the family. I yes. got a word for you. I got a word for you. Okay. That's uh, that leg that you were praying about. That you said you're not going to let anybody touch. The Lord's going to touch it. Amen. 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 It's going to get well. Amen. It's going to get well. <laughs> That's great. Do you like to cook, Erlene? Yeah. Okay, keep cooking. <laughs> well, that, what a wonderful way to minister to people. I don't like to cook. I say, oh, can I take you out to a restaurant? <laughs> but if you like to cook, use that as a ministry tool. For the Lord says there are people around about you, there are people in your circle that just needs a touch, that just needs your love, that just saying, I love you, come to my house for dinner. You'll be surprised the opportunities to minister to these people that that will open up for you. Okay, okay uh, we're just about wrapping it up. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna request something that we don't know, I've never done it before. Uh, so here we go. I want you to turn to a neighbor, not necessarily your man or wife. In fact, hopefully not your man or wife. But I want you to turn to a neighbor, and I want you to declare something good over them. Something good over them. Something they can take and say, the Lord spoke to me through, what's his name? You know, through whoever your neighbor is. But just say something good. God only speaks good things, and you're only going to speak a good thing. Therefore, you're going to, speaking the, you're going to be speaking the word of God to that person. Can you do that? Yeah. Yeah. Every one of you, turn to somebody next to you and speak something good to them, a good thing. All right, all right, all right, all right. That's enough good times. <laughs> all right, now, did everybody get a word spoken to them? Is there anybody who did not get a good word spoken to them? Is there anybody who did not get a good right word spoken right to them? There, right there. Right where? Right there, in that, the first girl back there. Then give her a word. Oh, you give her a word. Go give her a word. <laughs> Go okay. give her a word. I'm going to give you a good word, sister. The Lord wants to use you. You have a wonderful heart. You have a heart that wants to serve and wait on other people. Is that right? Did you get a word spoken okay. to you? Right. <laughs> yes, Lord. We thank you that you're going to use this. You're going to increase this gift. It's such a wonderful gift. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And open up doors. Give her opportunities. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, these words were not recorded, so you're going to have to try to remember what that person said to you, okay? Okay. All right. Okay, I think we're... Okay, but if you'll come up... Oh, I got to pass up. Okay, sorry. Um, okay, so I have, I have two handouts. Am I still speaking to my... Yes. Yes. I, okay, I have two handouts. I have a handout of, uh, 
I only have, I only made 20 copies. Maybe if somebody wants copies, the pastor will make one of his. All right, so these are 20, these are scriptures, promises for healing. There's only 20 of them, give one per family, okay? And then I also have something else that a lot of you are gonna like. This one I've had since December 27, 1995. Don't throw it away. If I've had it that long, you guys can have it till 19, till 2025, or 2035, or 2050. I don't know, whatever, some, sometime long. This is, yeah, this, is a, uh, this is a scripture, again, collected by D Dick Mills, about people, about scriptures, about having your, your family saved, about getting your family saved. So there's a lot of scriptures here. There's probably 15, 18 scriptures uh, that, that deal with that area. Again, I only have 20, so one per family would be a good, uh, a good answer. I want to give a real short testimony for you that have a loved one that is not saved, a child that is not saved. We had a daughter, we have a daughter who was raised in the church, went to Bible school, got married, got divorced, married a Muslim, became a Muslim. And I used to pray, 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 pray. One day I was coming down the stairs and the Lord, and not only did I pray, but I talked to her all the time because I just thought, yeah, I'll be able to convince her, you know. But I was walking down the stairs at our house and the, the Bible was there and the Lord said, I want to speak to you. Picked up the Bible, went over in the chair, sat down. Almost as soon as I sat down, the Lord said, she's mine. And I knew what he meant. He didn't need my help counseling her all the time that she never did anything I said anyway, but I just kept talking anyway. <laughs> so anyway, guys, it wasn't that long till she left that man, she went back to her husband, renewed her vows, renewed her walk with the Lord. She's a Pentecostal Christian serving the Lord. Don't give up. Did you get a word? Did you? You want another word? Sure. She's sure. Here's a sure word for you. A sure word for you is that the Lord loves you beyond measure. You know what that means? More than you can imagine. And just imagine, that's the way God loves us. He truly loves every one of us that way. Beyond measure. He loves you more than we can imagine. He just loves us. He just loves us. He is pure love. Pastor, that was really good this morning, your, your exhortation uh, uh, and explanation of what we were singing. That was really good. I didn't get the least bit tired while I, you rambled on. For <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Well, I think they enjoyed it. We should have you back. No, let's not wait now three, five, whatever years it's been. Um, this has been a, just a, a tremendous blessing and a, a great encouragement. And we just want to say thank you. Um, church, I'd like to remind you we have an opportunity to honor them this day um, financially to be a blessing to them. And I would remind you that when we honor the men and women of God, we honor not just them, but the God whom they serve. Amen. So when we honor them, we're honoring God. Amen. And when we honor God, we honor one another. So yeah. let's be in a practical way. Um, let's honor them. We have the, uh, the oh, little wooden church. It's, it's right over here. <laughs> Miss Anastasia's garden. It. So if you, if you would, please um, take a, a, an opportunity to uh, honor them and be a blessing to them. Um, the fact of the matter is they probably don't need it, but that is completely irrelevant, guys. Uh, let's be honest. If they're wealthy, does that mean that we don't have to honor the Lord? Not at all. In point of fact, that's us looking at the natural to say, well, eh, they don't need it. I'll, I'll scale back. That's us looking naturally and missing the supernatural. 
when we would say, we love you, we appreciate you, now excuse me as I honor the Lord by honoring you, yeah. if that makes more Good, sense. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Uh, they th we, no, right there is fine. Right there is fine. Unless, oh, they're putting cupcakes out. All right, there's cupcakes over there. To get to them, you've got to go behind the wooden church. So you better <laughs> stop at the wooden church first. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Can we pray? Can we pray together? And again, um, could you hold hands with somebody next to you? Mike, you're going to have to move. Kelly, you're going to have to. Amen. Let's hold somebody's hand because we're family. Not only are we friends. Are we friends? I hope we're friends. Are we friends? Yes. Tony, are we friends? Yes. We're, we're friends, Tony. Me and Jaylene are friends. You're right. <laughs> All right. We want to be not just family, but we want to be friends. And we want to lift one another up in prayer. All right. I'm going to lead us and then... Uh, uh, as you, as we lead, guys, if you'll squeeze a person's hand to your left or to your right or whatever, and then just as you do that, that is asking the Lord, Lord, bless this person right mm -hmm. now. Meet them where they need. Meet them in their hurts. Meet them in their victories. Father, right now, we want to lift up the body of Christ. Thank you for the gifts that you've placed in the body of Christ. Father, today you have blessed us with people who have gone the journey ahead to encourage us, to stir us up. Father, I do believe today you delivered through them what you asked, what you said you would, that you would impart spiritual gifts, spiritual blessings this day. You've done just that through them this day. Father, that, that, that we would be established, strengthened in faith, immovable. Father, we love you and we praise you. Father, right now we ask blessings over our brothers and sisters. As we give them a squeeze, Father, we, we impart blessings and grace to them. We thank you for them. Thank you, Father, that we too are deficient by design. We need each other and we need you. Oh, God, we need you. Father, bless the remainder of this day. Protect us this week as we go from this place. We love you. We praise you. We worship you. It's under the banner, the name, the one, our Savior, Christ Jesus. We pray. Amen. Amen.